Slamcast. 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 Welcome. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Slamcast. I'm your host, Greg. Let's get right into it, shall we? How are y'all doing today? Y'all having a good weekend, good day, good week? I hope you are because I've had what's possibly going to be one of the best weekends in, well, one of the best normal weekends I should say I've had in a while because I was just at Florida recently as you guys know, so to say it was one of the best weekends I've had in a while um, kind, of, kind of undermines the fact that I went to Florida for who knows how long ago. Was it like two weeks ago, I guess? Yeah, I guess two weeks ago. Um, so yeah, kind of the best, most normal weekend I've had in a while. Um, and by that, I mean sort of, you know, staying within my general area and doing something that's not super out of the ordinary for, you know, the kind of area that I reside in and hang out in on the weekends. Um, and it's funny cause I say that and it probably only feels like the best weekend I've ever had because of a concert that I went to and I, that concert, or at least the main attraction of the concert, the main reason I went probably only attributes to like an hour of my entire weekend so, like, an hour of, like, roughly a 72-hour weekend. If you're including the entirety of Friday, obviously. If not, then it's it's less than that, but still. Um, so, you know when you go to a concert of a band that you're really amped up for, and it kind of just fires you up, and then, like, the next day, and the whole night after the concert, you're just kind of amped up the whole time, and you're, like, just freaking out internally. You're just, like, having the time of your damn lives. Hold on a second, folks. I just want to tune something. Just quickly tuning something because I'm an unprofessor- unprofessional piece of shit. Uh, so that seems like it's a bit better. There we go. Felt like I was getting too loud there, and I don't want to bust all of your speakers and headphones and your eardrums. So yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to discuss what happened to me yesterday. Um, just like the last few weeks, I'm recording this episode on uh, Sunday as well. I've really been sticking that Sunday recording schedule. I surely get back to the Saturday recording schedule. Um, but I figured Sunday would be better because... So yeah, my main, my main topic for today, this week, is just going to be... Um, in this whole conf- concert situation, because uh, I feel like this concert has felt a little different to me, at least, because, um, not to sound like a major hipster loser here, um, but the band I was te- checking out was um, definitely more on the underground side, and it's kind of a um, kind of a new experience for me, at least for the, the type of band I was going to see, and um, just because I wasn't sure exactly how um, popular they were. Uh, I knew they were fairly underground though. Um, I was amped up as hell to see them though. So I wasn't sure how big of a crowd there would be or what type of crowd there would be. Um, cause I have gone to a few sort of more underground band concerts, but I've always kind of known what to expect from the audience at least and like the music. But this time around, um, I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. I was excited as hell. I wasn't like worried about it or anything, but um, yeah, I was definitely kind of intrigued as to what would go down. Um, so I feel like I'm kind of beating around the bush with this, but the band I went to see goes by the name of Tupperware Remix Party, and I highly suggest you check them out. Um, the way I would um, describe their kind of sound or the genre or subgenre that they mainly stick with sort of this weird kind of 
I want to say, I say this kind of jokingly, but also kind of serious, is sort of a progressive uh, space funk band. Um, they definitely have a, quite a few songs that are very like prog rocky, um, but they they always have some sort of like funk twist to them. And their last few EPs that they've released have been very funk orientated, um, very sort of 70s, 80s feel to these guys. Um, <clears throat> and a hilarious thing about them is the fact that they, um, also, if my voice sounds like garbage right now, it's because I was hollering all night. So, you know, there's that. Um, no regrets. No regrets. Um, but yeah, I highly suggest you check them out if that sounds like the kind of thing you would be into. Um, really awesome music, really awesome performances from the guys. Um, I'm just going to give a play by play at this point. Cause I feel like I'm kind of bouncing back and forth between different, um, different, um, sort of, I want to say opinions, but I feel like just sort of different thoughts. Um, so I'm just going to give a play by play at this point. So the doors opened at 8.30. I managed to drag um, my friend Mandy along with me. Um, shout out to Mandy for being a good friend and having me drag her along. She enjoyed the show. Um, I asked her at the end of it and she seemed to really enjoy it, which made me happy because um, worst case scenario is... Well, not worst case scenario, but it would have been kind of a bummer if you bring a friend along to a concert that you're super pumped about, and at the end of it, they're kind of just like, I don't know, it was all right. Not to say that she was like that. I was worried she was like that. I figured she'd be into the music that I was kind of dragging her along to, but you know, I would have felt a little bad about it. And luckily, that didn't happen. So she drove us to the subway station that we got to. Uh, at around 8, even though doors opened at 8.30 because, of course, she didn't know any of the bands that were playing, and I only knew the Tupperware Remix Party um, guys. Um, also go by the names of Twerp, so if I start saying Twerp, you know, that's who I'm talking about because they go by T-W-R-P, so Twerp. Um, so we really didn't know the sort of openers for Tupperware Remix Party, and I kind of looked them up, and there was one band that I was kind of into, but another one that I was sort of like, I listened to his stuff. I listened to both their stuff, and the one guys I listened to, I was like, yeah, this is like pretty amped up, pretty awesome, like weird electronic music, like sounds good. The other guy... He had a few like upbeat, happier sort of tracks, but like most of them were like really mellow, but like a depressing kind of mellow, if that sort of makes sense. Um, I'm not gonna call out the guy. I think it was one dude, the one uh, the band I wasn't into because I could see myself still still being into his music, just not for a concert venue, and I never we never ended up actually seeing him play. So who knows? He could have, um, he could have slammed out some awesome, wicked, uh, pumped up tracks. Uh, and I feel like I really shouldn't, I'm not, I'm not trying to shit on this guy at all. So I'm not going to call him out and be like, eh, he was shit. If you ever see him in public, punch him in the face. Cause he's a dope. Cause he wasn't seemed like he had some real skill. Uh, with the music he was making. But yeah, so we figured we could leave at 8 and then show up to the venue around 10-ish um, because we kind of weren't 100% sure what the other bands would be like, uh, which is a reasonable plan. So we left at around 8, got to the subway station around 8.30, um, got off at the wrong subway station. I kind of messed up. Uh, we got off at the wrong subway station. We should have crossed over to a different subway line. Uh, so we ended up having to walk half an hour to the venue. Um, but the plan wasn't even to <clears throat> go to the venue straight from the subway station. So the fact that we had to walk, it wasn't even half an hour. Google said it was going to take half an hour. It only ended up taking like 15, 20 minutes. Um, we ended up, we were already planning on stopping at a bar before we got there just to kind of like chill and talk and stuff. Cause you know, when you're at a concert 
and I hadn't seen Mandy in a while. When you're at a concert, you're kind of just yelling at each other if you want any sort of real conversation. So it was nice to kind of sit down. We ended up finding a bar because I was kind of, we figured we'd uh, go to a bar, grab a drink or two, and then head to the concert. And then by then, we wouldn't have to wait long until Twerp came on stage, which ended up kind of working out as planned. Uh, So we found a bar that was like five minute walk from the concert hall we were heading to. Uh, Can you even call it a concert hall? I guess so even if it's a smaller underground one, uh, regardless. So we go to the bar, sit down, have a few drinks. Mandy's checking out the hockey game because she's interested in hockey. And not that I can care less, but I was like, all right, cool. Um, so we kind of talked about whatever, had a few drinks. Uh, the drinks went a little longer than expected, and we ended up getting to the venue, I think, closer to 1030 as opposed to 10. Cause we were kind of just taking our time sipping on our drinks. So we got to the venue. Um, turns out the band that I wanted to see play, which was uh, scientists of sound uh, were second. They were, so we didn't see the band that I kind of was worried was going to be kind of a mellow depressing band before twerp went on stage. So that worked out in my favor and I was pretty amped about that. And it was pretty hilarious too, because these guys, scientists of sound, they both had, they both had animal masks on while they were on stage. So there was like a zebra dude. One dude had a zebra mask on, and the other dude had a, what I want to say it was a lamb mask on. So Mandy was kind of like giving me weird looks because she was like, "What the hell's up with these dudes?" And I was just like, "I don't know," but they sound good, and they did sound good. I'll definitely check out their stuff when I get the chance. Um, it was a very interesting kind of uh, setup that band had, Scientists of Sound. It was one dude on guitar and then another dude on a sort of laptop mixer electronic deal. So, and the guy with the guitar was doing some like singing here and there, which I thought was pretty interesting. It gave her a very interesting, interesting sound, very uh, weird sort of industrial electronic type uh, hard crunch to it. And that's another thing I love about music and talking about music is I feel with music, you can use like any sort of adverb and adjective known to man. And like, as long as you're saying it to somebody else who like listens to or enjoys listening to music on the regular and like sort of judging and criticizing music and stuff, you use just like any adverb or any adjective. And that person would be like, oh, yes, I understand. Had a good, a good hard crunch to their sound yes i know exactly what you're talking about oh, interesting which i just think's hilarious and awesome at the same time but yeah very powerful sound uh they were good they were getting the crowd kind of amped up which is uh always a good sign i imagine when you're not the main main show or main band in the lineup and you're still getting the the crowd pretty amped up so yeah another thing that happened and this is kind of like the second we stepped into this venue i was like merch table away and i kind of just instantly hit up the merch table and i was like i'm gonna buy all of your things right now because we all know how it is at uh, concerts especially for huge venues everybody decides to hit the merch tables after the show's done so i was like fuck it i'm buying everything right now i basically just grabbed shit i didn't actually grab shit but i just went up to the merch guy and i was like i want this 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 and he just threw it all at me threw the money in his face grabbed it all I was just like, oh, yes, merch, solid merch. But there's one thing that I've also noticed that I kind of hate about merch, and it's just my own personal thing. It's nothing against any merch vendors or merch merch tables. Is deciding what t-shirt I want to get from whatever band I'm grabbing. I've had this feeling before. And you always grab the t-shirt because in your mind right away, you're like, you know what, that one's the cooler one. And then you grab it and throw it on. You're like, oh, this is a wicked t-shirt. And all of a sudden, the next day, you essentially get buyer's remorse. And you're like, maybe I wanted the other t-shirt. That other t-shirt had a really cool design. Fuck. But I'm pretty happy with the t-shirt that I got. So I got a t-shirt, a poster, and a CD. And this is the one thing that I love about at least how underground this band was. How much do you think a t-shirt, a poster, and a CD would come out to in a normal 
a normal, like a huge, a huge concert kind of deal. That would probably ring you up to like probably triple digits. Maybe. I don't even know. Do they sell CDs at massive concerts anymore? I feel like that they might do it nowadays, but I feel like the last few massive bands I've seen, they kind of just are like, you're going to pirate the music anyways or buy it on iTunes. I don't give a shit. We're not going to waste the money printing digital uh, information onto a, a discus. But yeah. So uh, uh, also, I have to add, the poster was pre-signed by the entire band. So a pre-signed poster, a t-shirt with a cool design on it, and a CD. That all came to $40, which in my opinion is a wicked deal considering most venues I've been to, the t-shirt itself would be $40. So I thought that was wicked awesome sweet. And I kind of threw my money at him and I was like, awesome. And I was like talking to the merch guys, at least at the smaller, uh, more underground venues. Um, Cause they always kind of know the bands to some degree. So I remember like leaning into the merch guy and being like, Hey, do you know the band? Cause like music was blaring. So I had to basically yell at him. He was like, yeah, I know the band. I was like, are they going to kill it tonight? He's like, yeah, they're going to kill it tonight. And I was like, awesome. It's just those always small interactions that you get with random dudes. Um, that's pretty awesome. I actually ran into some random dude. Uh, this is farther in the night. Um, I was holding a spot for Mandy because she ran to the washroom. So I was kind of kept looking back to see if she was coming back because I was, I was basically in a power stance at this point. Legs spread out so that I was basically taking up space for two people. Because sometimes those people can get rowdy and start stealing spots and stuff the second you leave. Um, so I kept looking back to the, the exit where the washrooms were and this dude kind of, well, honestly kind of looked like me, which I thought was also hilarious. Um, he, he locks eyes with me and he's like, Hey, and at first I like turned around and I realized he was like, I was, and then I realized, excuse me, that I was like, Oh shit, that guy was kind of talking to me and I was like, fuck it. We're here for the same reason. I'll chat him up. So I start chatting this dude up a bit talking about the band, find out his name's Robbie, which is extra hilarious. A dude who looks like me, who has a uh, name of one of my best buddies who's been on the show before. If you haven't checked out that episode, I believe it's episode 10 featuring Robbie and Anthony. Uh, craziness ensues. But I thought that was hilarious and I chatted him up for five minutes. We just kind of talked about the band and how I have to amped up. We were to see them because scientists of sound was still on at this time. So we got there, I threw money at the merch table, threw the shirt over my hoodie, so, you know, just adding more heat to myself. Um, so, it was an interesting crowd. One thing I remember talking to Mandy about, which we didn't have a huge answer for, was kind of just like, one thing I was curious about was how many people showed up just because there was a show happening at that venue. Because I had a feeling that some of the people were there, not all of them, not talking shit about the band I went to see. I'm not saying that the entire group was, but I was definitely getting a feel from the crowd that it was like, there's definitely some people that just show up there on Saturdays and just, because when we showed up, there was like, definitely you didn't need a ticket. You could just give them like $20 and they would be like, yeah, go ahead. Also the tickets were like $20. Another awesome thing about underground bands, not stupid, ridiculous, almost a hundred dollar prices for, uh, massive venues. So, um, yeah, I was kind of curious as to how many people just showed up for the sake of being like, Oh, it's a Saturday night. Uh, the Lee's palace, which is where we went. Lee's palace has got some band going down. Might as well just show up with my buddies, uh, have a few drinks and just hang out and rock out. Because honestly, if you, you live in downtown Toronto, which is where Lee's Palace is, or at least in that area, with all these venues and stuff, I would probably do that pretty often if I wasn't a suburban dweller. <clears throat> but, um, so yeah, just something interesting that I kind of considered. I was like, I wonder how many people, because I probably would do it if I knew that Lee's Palace had like awesome bands on the regular, which it seems like they probably do. So yeah, we, we did good timing. Um, Scientists of Sound was probably on for another half hour, so we probably missed like the first 15 minutes, half hour of their set. Um, 
but they rocked out pretty hard and that was awesome. And then I want to say twerp didn't come on until 1130 and they didn't end until I want to say one ish, maybe a bit before one. But yeah, needless to say, I went fucking nuts and just insane and crazy and just rocking out to my heart's content and just loving every second of it. I filmed like little 30 second increments of every song. I don't know why I first started doing it just because I might make a tiny little video of it, but I feel like there's not enough footage. It'll just be like a jumbled up mess of a bunch of random songs all spliced together. But I don't know. I just started doing it for like their first song and not even like Snapchatting it or anything. I was just like taking quick, like 15 second to 30 second, um, clips and i tried not to be that douche who like has his camera up the whole goddamn time so i tried to make sure the clips were nice and short um also me and mandy stayed pretty far back i actually didn't go into this whole the whole i guess mosh pit area is what you would call it and i'm kind of glad i didn't because it seemed like there wasn't a massive difference between where we were standing and the mosh pit area other than i would have been like squished between a bunch of people so i'm actually kind of glad i stayed back because it allowed me to have some dance rock out room where I could kind of go nuts because that's the one thing I don't like and it's a personal thing again is like I'm always afraid when I'm going to go nuts I'm going to like elbow somebody in the face or something so whenever I make any sort of physical contact with anyone when I'm at a concert I'm always kind of just like kind of restrain myself a little bit and I'm like oh shit I hope it didn't hurt that person but I'm going to keep like rocking out anyways because that's what I came here to do but yeah I went nuts for like an hour hour and a half I guess, I don't know. I can't even tell. I can't even tell how much time passed. It was like a, a time itself froze and I rocked out for an infinite amount of time. I don't even know. But yeah, here's the best part. So they played a whole bunch of awesome songs and I knew most of their songs because um, they've only released EPs. But I mean, the EPs in total, they probably have like 20 songs at this point, which isn't too bad. That's like what? just over two albums worth of songs, I guess. So they played most of their songs. Uh, oh, and this is an awesome thing too that I keep forgetting, forgetting to bring up is this yesterday was the day they released their latest EP. So yesterday they were also kind of celebrating the release of their EP and they played their e their latest EP um, titled guardians of the zone, which is the CD I bought. Um, they played it front to back in its entirety, like halfway through the set. They were just like, all right, we're going to start playing our new EP now, get friggin' amped. And I actually listened to it before on their band camp before going, because at first I was like, no, I'm going to go in blind or like, I guess going in deaf, um, <laughs> for lack of a better term. But then as I was sitting there, like as the day was going by, I was kind of like, uh, I really like when I actually know the songs that they play. So I gave it one quick listen of all, the entire EP, and I was like, all right, tonight's going to be sick. But, you know, back fast forward to Twerp rocking out and me rocking out, everybody rocking out, having a good time. Um, so, of course, they had an encore. They finished up, and then they, like, it wasn't even, like, one of those things where it's, like, a while, like a minute or two and then they come out it felt like it was like 30 seconds they like quickly left the stage we all started chanting for another song and they like almost immediately just came back out it's like basically like every band does it at this point it's like very rarely does a band go get off stage who's like the main headlining band and just like never come back i feel like it's just like a thing that always you always expect at this point um, so they rocked out even harder for their encore and I rocked out my hardest during the encore. Cause I was like, this, they're the final few minutes I'll have of just pure ecstasy. Um, cause that's basically me just having to go back to my boring ass life after that concert. So I just freaking went hard as hell. And then after they were done playing, Mandy had to quickly go to the washroom again I get that wire checked out, man. No, I'm kidding. I was just joking. But she, she went and she was like, just stay here. And I was like, cool, cool, sure. 
because everybody just started rushing out. Uh, typical concert. Um, but yeah, so I waited for however long I needed to. And I was kind of fine with just staying there and seeing all the crowd of people and stuff and kind of getting a general sense of the venue and the crowd. Because like I was, I was saying earlier, I didn't know what to expect with this crowd, mainly because of the music. Like, I didn't know. I figured there wouldn't be a ridiculous mosh pit, and there kind of wasn't. And it was kind of just a group of people kind of just partying and rocking out and having a good time. So, you know, it's a good, good thing to have for a crowd. Uh, I'll know what to expect next time. Next time, twerps in Toronto. But, um, so everybody just kind of started leaving, and it got pretty empty pretty quick. And then all of a sudden, just as Mandy, Mandy got back, uh, the drummer showed up, um, like basically like five feet in front of me, not five feet in front of me, uh, 10 feet in front of me, something like that. Anyways, he, he was like already at the back of the venue and he was like signing stuff and taking selfies with people. And I was like, Oh shit. So I went and got a selfie with him. Um, and then I realized the whole band was out and just like signing shit and talking to people quickly and getting selfies. And I was like, I got to get a selfie with all these guys right now. So I quickly went, chatted them up a tiny bit, um, got my selfies. And here's one thing that I haven't mentioned to you guys about Tupperware Remix Party, um, which you might already know if I've talked to the band about you before, or if you've Google searched them within the time of me talking about this venue or this show. Um, these guys all dress up. They're one of those kinds of bands that get dressed up all funky and stuff. Uh, and they have ridiculous, awesome names in my opinion. So the drummer's name is have Hogan. I believe that's his name. And he's basically a robot with glowing red eyes and he's the drummer. And that was amazing. And then there's Lord Phobos, who's the lead guitarist, who looks like some weird robot alien. And then there's Commander Meowch, who's some sort of tiger bassist hybrid, which is hilarious. And then there's Dr. Sung, who's keyboardist and lead talk, talk box singer, uh, whatever you want to call it. And he's like a sort of futuristic looking future man with glowing lights and shit. So I got uh, selfies with all of them. And then also during the show, they all got into a wicked power stance for like a solid 15 seconds, which allowed me to quickly take out my phone and take a sweet uh, picture of that. So I got all these wicked pictures of the show and selfies with the band and it chatted them up a bit. And Mandy also ended up getting a selfie with Commander Meowch because he's basically a giant cat. And I figured... She would enjoy that of all things. So yeah, that's basically the night. And then we went home and I quickly grabbed a hot dog outside of the subway station we were at, we were uh, driving from. Because I was pretty hammered at that point. I tried to keep it pretty uh, tame, but by the end of the night, I was just running on so much adrenaline stuff that I was just like, started getting shots. And then I even got a shot after. I basically got, I got two shots that night. I got an encore shot because I knew I could quickly grab a shot um, before they came back on stage. And then I got another one after that, which I wasn't planning on, which I, the only reason I got it was because I got selfies with the whole band and I was kind of just hopped up on adrenaline and just amazing feelings. And I was like, I'm going to go get another shot. And I did. So I got a wicked hot dog, which tasted amazing. Uh, and then we kind of just went home and I passed out. And my head was hurting pretty hard this morning, but it was all worth it. And then to make this evening even better, or this evening, this weekend even better, uh, Game of Thrones starts back up this evening, along with my favorite, most hyped up show, more hyped up than Game of Thrones, Silicon Valley, which if you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend you do. And I was going to get into a whole thing about why I think Silicon Valley is better than Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is bad, yada, yada. But I'm already hitting the half hour mark. And that would just sound like a pretentious tool. But, you know, I'd highly suggest you check out Silicon Valley. And if you have and you're not into it, that's fine. I just really enjoy that show. And I get more hyped up for that show than I do Game of Thrones. So I'll definitely be watching both of those tonight. And who knows? 
maybe I'll um, have a little spoiler discussion once both those seasons are up. I keep talking about having spoiler discussion podcasts, but those never come to, so maybe they won't. I also follow some of the main cast on of Silicon Valley on Twitter, and they say that this season is the best season so far. So I'm pretty excited for it. That's for all the people who are actually going to be watching the show with me tonight or tomorrow. But yeah, as you can tell, I, I can already tell I'm getting hyped up just from retelling the story of last night's amazing rock show. So yeah, I hope you all have an amazing rock show of a night or rock show of a week. I will talk to all of you crazy fools later. Uh, outro, Greg, take us out. Take us away. Well, folks, that's all we have for this week. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope you'll join us next week for whatever crazy shit we talk about. Until next time, have a good one, 